Good morning, Internet, or good evening, Internet, or good something. I'm not entirely sure when I'm going to release these. Uh, so, when I started the channel, I knew I wanted to be doing something that was fun, entertaining, and educational. So I started with the how-to videos, and I started with the uh, travel vlog, but it was always my intention of the to, to start a channel that also talked about uh, portions of my industry that get glossed over or don't get talked about. Uh, I think to some extent there's a little bit of kind of glamorization of being like the cool bartender, you know, giving people drinks, getting someone bringing you like, oh, here's a little free something. Maybe you hit me up with a shot next time. And like, that's all honestly kind of true and a lot of fun. But there's a lot of other things that happen in our industry that when I was coming up and first new to the industry, I wish I had had someone there to tell me about them so that when I encountered them myself, uh, I would have been able to navigate that better. Um, so in this new uh, uh, video format, I will be talking about some more adult themes, uh, some stuff in the industry that can get a little dark. And because of that, I wanted to give you fair warning. Uh, I'll be talking about some adult themes here, and I'll try and put the appropriate trigger warnings before my videos. Um, and also, I wanted to let you know that unlike the other videos that I will be making on this channel, this one is going to be using uh, adult language. There will be swears. Uh, when I'm talking about adult themes and when I'm speaking frankly without a script, I figure I'll probably fall into some of the bartending speech that I have, and being a industry professional, Lord knows I use quite a few fuck words, so just be aware of that. Um, all right. Oh, and one more thing. Because it's going to be kind of more adult themes and it can get a little dark, a little heavy, I'm going to try and keep these videos short. Uh, I'm going to put a five-minute timer on my phone, and when that timer goes off, maybe I'll finish with couple sentences as a conclusion or something. Maybe I won't. I'm still kind of figuring this format out, but uh, I'll try and keep it short so that you guys don't have to sit there and uh, slog through something that maybe you were hoping to have some like laughs and ha-has that day. But uh, honestly, I think it would be good to put more stuff like this out in the world because portions of our industry are often invisible and the problems that come along in the industry can also be made invisible because of that. So, yeah. Being a bartender takes a lot of skills, but the nuts and bolts of it, how to make drinks, uh, money handling skills, opening and closing tasks, these are things that I can teach someone in a couple of shifts, a couple of afternoons. There are things that our job requires that are a little bit more internal, and those things can lead to some certain personal fallouts that, if you aren't aware of, can kind of be troubling. For one thing, bartending takes a lot of emotional energy. When you come into the bar and you're having a bad day at work and you hate your boss, it's my job to hate your boss. If you come into the bar and you're feeling a little flirty and as long as you're not being inappropriate, it's my job to sit there and be a uh, kind of a place for that energy. If you come into the bar and it's your honeymoon, it's my job to go like, Oh, it's your honeymoon? That's oh, and you came here? I'm I'm honored. Uh, beers are on us for sure. And uh, what's your names? What's your, what's your favorite liquor? I'm gonna I'm gonna make a shot up right now. I'm gonna name it after you guys, and we're gonna run it all night as our special. And it's not that I'm lying. It's not that I am not excited that you're on your honeymoon, and it's not that I'm not sympathetic about the fact that you're having a bad time with your boss. But it is strange to have to be as invested as I am, as quickly as I am. But it does make for a better experience for you. And truth be told, I rely on tips and it means that money goes up for me. And <clears throat> that leads to some interesting things. We are on stage eight to 10 hours a day. And by that I mean minus opening and closing tasks. People are in front of us and we are talking eight to 10 hours. 
And every couple hours we recycle the same stories because there's new people sitting in front of us. But we have to code switch back and forth down the bar. I'm mad at his boss, but I'm happy that you're here because I haven't seen you in a while. And you're on your honeymoon, and I'm so stoked for that. And, you, you know, like, I haven't been flirted with by a cute girl. I haven't been flirted with with a cute boy in uh, 35 minutes. This is very special to me. And these things can cost a lot uh, emotionally. And they often lead to when you get off of work, not wanting to talk to another person at all for at least an hour. I never want to talk to anyone, which can mean that I am standoffish in public and I'm standoffish even with friends. I come home or I go out to the party that I'm supposed to go out to after work and people ask me questions and I either don't feel like answering or it takes a lot more energy to fake the enthusiasm with people that I actually like, which can be damaging to some relationships to say the least. But maybe a more uh, problematic thing for me is that you spend 40 hours, 80 hours a week, depending on how bad your work schedule is, internalizing this need to empathize with other people, to make them feel valued so quickly that in your personal time, you start doing that. And while the concept of having your first, the concept of having your, your, your first inclination to any situation be empathy, that's kind of good, I suppose. But we don't really get a choice in the matter when it becomes this second nature. I find myself agreeing to things or being pleasant to people out in the wide world. And then like halfway through the interaction, I realize that I'm actually offended by the things that they are saying, or I realize that like, I don't actually care about the situation that I'm in. I'm just faking it because that's what my job requires a lot of times. And that realization has at times made me realize that I wasn't sure if the situation I was in or the people that I'm with, I'm not sure of my own level of emotional attachment to them. And that can be really jarring when you're sitting there next to your friends realizing you're not entirely sure if you give a shit about about them, the situation, any of that. I think ending on such a dour note uh, might be a little rough, so let me take a couple sentences and just finish up. Obviously, I love my friends, and obviously, you don't necessarily have to have these existential crises, but there will be moments when you're doing this job where you realize you spend so much emotional energy at your work figuring out your emotions and your emotional intimacy in your personal time can be difficult. And what I've found, or at least what has worked for me, is to realize that the person at work is me, he's just me amplified. And I don't have to question whether or not I like the things that I like. Rather, I have to be wary that I'm overtaxing myself in my level of how much I like them. But hey, if you all have anything to add, or if anyone out there has found a better coping me mechanism than I have, uh, I'd love to hear about it. Leave a comment, shoot me an email, uh, all that stuff. You can find my website and all that stuff in the description. Um, but yeah, let me know if you thought this discussion was important or helpful. Uh, let me know if I'm not, you know, let me know that I'm not alone in this. If you feel this like weird emotional dissonance between your work self and your job self, I'd love to hear from you. Anyways, I've been Dave, your personal bartender, your friend. 
And as always, if it ever looks like your bottle is half empty, that's okay. Cheers.